happy Sunday. I've just been waiting for this opportunity for 10.57 to arrive and I'm excited to be here and I'll look forward to sharing with you today. First, I'm going to get ready by using present time to bring myself into present time. I may use this again later because this is something that is very, very important as far as I'm concerned to always live in present time. And that is something that I've really, really been working on for the past 20, 24 years because prior to that time, I did not live in present time. So let's all apply whatever oils you have around you, whichever ones that you brought for this experience today, layer them on. And I'm going to first start with the um, Tibetan bowl. I did bring my rainbow healing bowl up here, but I felt like this was the one that I required this morning. So perhaps some of you require this one. Breathe in, enjoy. Happy, happy Sunday. I hope that you've had a wonderful, wonderful week and learned some exciting things about yourself and how to stay grounded and in harmony, in peace. Today, I feel a little bit, no, I feel a lot like a thief because I am presenting to you Stephen's power healing statements that he developed over many, many years. And he taught them to me in 1996. So I have been using them. I first experienced them 24 years ago. Actually, we're coming up on 25 years because it was more than six months into the, it was at the beginning of the year. So these statements, any one of you who's had the, the opportunity to experience any of Stephen's healing sessions know how powerful this can be. And of course, there is another ingredient in his sessions and that is Stephen. So, however, these are very powerful statements when we apply our intent and the intent and the focus are extremely important. So I cannot impress upon you how important they are. So as I said, I've already used the present time. I have all of my, my rainbow healing oils right here, sitting here and I've used them on my journey of the glyphs. And I want to explain how that this probably, looking back, it isn't, isn't retrospect a wonderful, wonderful thing for us to experience because we see things in a very different light. And looking back on it, these statements that I'm going to present, they're not written anywhere. But these statements that I'm going to present will, are the basis probably for 
allowing me to create the Rainbow Healing System. And over the last six years, Stephen and I have been incorporating his work from those previous 20 or 30 or 35 years and my work into what is now our Rainbow Healing System. So it is a progression, a step-by-step -step procedure. I'm a step-by-step -step person, so it's important to me to kind of have a sequence to do. So I have in front of me all of the oils of the Rainbow Healing. I have in front of me the crystals, little, little tumble stones of the crystals that I will perhaps talk about. It depends on how our time is going and I will try to be cognizant of the time. So the first thing is that, that we must get ourselves prepared for healing and that preparation is creating that sacred space. That sacred space where you are fully connected with the source and pushing out all of the stuff, all of the junk, all of the distractions in the outer world and having that, that filter, that boundary up so that nothing comes in to, to interfere with your healing process in any way. So, and we have those three, three boundaries or three filters. I can, I've always called them boundaries. The silver one on the outside, which reflects back to the center, anything harmful. The gold, the sparkling golden on the inside, which will transmute any negativity. And then that red filter, which we can put inside wherever it feels right for you to put it, that red filter which will stop anything that manages to get through. So, are you ready? So, let's take a deep breath in. And I'm going to apply my sacred mountain right now because the sacred mountain, for me, I feel that this is what anchors that energy of the sacred space and make that strong connection with the source, intending that your connection be through the top of your crown, through your crown chakra, and that you connect through the bottoms of the feet and the base of the spine to the very core of earth, and extend it all the way down to connect with the source on the other side. So there we are, fully connected above and below with our boundaries up. And we're going to, to do that journey of the glyphs, which is to first to intend that, that forgiveness, to unblock all of those blocks. And then we're going to progress through the entire journey of the glyphs. And then we are ready for Stephen's statements. Okay, are you ready? Um, I am excited that I get to teach them to you and it may take a little more time and then how to apply them. So, now, the first thing, the reason we have to get connected with the source first is that we must be totally connected and in our sacred space, in our sacred space with everything else outside. And we're talking to, with the source whatever your concept is of the Creator, that which created all, or created you and everything in your reality. So, the first thing is to take a deep breath. That breathing is so very, very important. And is the first thing we're going to say to all chakras at all levels. Now, these are our energy centers. So, we're speaking to get all of our energy centers involved to all chakras at all levels, please send all of the energy necessary <clears throat> to clear all blocks, recognized and unrecognized. We all have them. 
That's what that first step in rainbow healing is all about. The forgiveness, and I don't have my cards in the right order because I've been playing with them. That's what that first step is all about. To unblock, to clear all blocks, whether they're recognized or unrecognized, at all levels of the body, mind, emotions, and or spirit and soul complex. Anywhere in time or space, this energy to be redirected wherever it has to go to accomplish this result in priority sequence. We don't have to know what that sequence is. The source knows what that sequence is. And you and the source know what that sequence for you is. It may have nothing to do with the sequence that might, might be for me or for your best friend or your mother or your father or your children. So we're going to intend to clear these blocks in priority sequence to affect to, to effect complete changes and to embrace all of these changes into wholeness. Okay. That's that first statement. It's kind of hard to go through it, chopping it up. As many times as I have said this, it is as if I have to go back and think, where am I in this? So, I'm going to actually read it to you in Stephen's words. We'll see how close I came, okay? Because the wording is extremely important, okay? And I've got it on my other phone, so. He says, and he does this in every single one of his healing sessions, to all chakras at all levels, Please send all the energy necessary to correct all blocks, recognized and not recognized, and all the causative factors thereof, no matter where they are, and to embrace these changes into wholeness. Now that's the first statement. Wow, it's a mouthful, isn't it? It becomes less and less. I lost the connection for a moment. I apologize. Something doesn't want this out there. <sighs> Let's take another deep breath. This is so very, very important to make this intent to be clear and to use these words. They're not written anywhere yet. They will be written at some point. I see. Stephen has just written them down for you. Wow, aren't you fortunate? So that's the first one. So after we have eliminated these blocks, and the blocks, there will be blocks at all times. As long as we're here on this planet, we will have blocks. It's not as if we do something and it comes back the next day. It's the fact that we are moving forward and we are taking away those layers of blocks as we go with our focus and intent. So the second one is much, much easier, much shorter, because this time we're going to talk about bringing everything into harmony, harmonizing all of these frequencies. And Stephen's words here are, to all chakras at all levels, please send all the energy necessary to convert all discordant vibrations into positive whole energy of the highest possible vibrational level. So as we're bringing all these things into harmony, you may choose to use Harmony Blend. That is a great one. Harmony Blend has, I think it is seven, 
seven of the rainbow healing single oils in there. Isn't that interesting? It's all that harmonizing process. So we're clearing the blocks at all levels, no matter where they're located, and we do not have to identify those. At one time, I felt I had to identify every block that I was attempting to clear. It really isn't that difficult. We just must focus and intend that wherever they're located, we, that they be cleared. Any level of the body, mind, emotions, and or spirit and soul complex, anywhere in time or space, we are clearing all the way back. This actually has the effect of clearing our ancestry as well. Isn't that powerful? And as we bring all of these frequencies with the second statement into harmony, as we ourselves, our energy is in harmony at every level, there is no more disease, no more illness, no more pain. We are in harmony. Our DNA will actually change. We may get younger. Stephen was showing me photos of back from 2014, 2015, some of the ceremonies that we had at the center. And he said, just, he just sent them without saying anything. And I looked at them and I thought, oh my gosh. I, the only way I can tell what year it was is by my hair, because my hair changes from year to year. And I looked at it and I was shocked because I really and truly feel that I look younger now at 77 than I did then when I was, what, 71. Amazing, isn't it? So as we do bring all of our energies, all of our complex into harmony, we too can, it can rise above the illness and disease and actually regenerate our physical cells and molecules, regenerating who we are, becoming that magnificent being that we were created to be. So, <sighs> there are three more things that I, let's see, what time is it? Okay, I have time. There are three more things that he likes to say at the end. I'm sorry, I have to come back here. Um, and this won't take very long because this is to intend, after we have brought all, everything into harmony, to intend to increase tolerance and reduce stress. I want you to think about that for just a moment. Increasing tolerance, tolerance of you and the things that you may have done. This goes all the way back to this, doesn't it? Forgiving ourselves for what we may have done, forgiving ourselves for what we may not have done in a given situation, and forgiving others for what they may or may not have done. It will start the process and, and it will clear the blocks. So as we increase tolerance, we're going to reduce our stress. And it's stress that destroys us. Stress gets us away from that connection with the source. Would you, believe, would you agree? So as we are increasing tolerance and reducing stress, then we take a deep breath and we're going to intend the next thing, which is to increase our strength because as we become stronger and stronger, we will reduce our vulnerability. Mm. We're all vulnerable in some areas. Every single one of us has vulnerabilities. I hesitate. I don't like the word weak or weakness 
So I prefer to think of them as lesser strengths or as Stephen uses the word, vulnerabilities. So we're going to increase our strength and we're going to reduce our vulnerabilities at the same time. The more the strength is, the lower. The higher up the strength, the lower the vulnerabilities. Wow, we're getting better, aren't we? And then the last one, and you're gonna love this one, is to bring the pain level down to zero. Would you enjoy going through life with zero pain? And that's all kinds of pain, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual pain. Reduce all pain level down to zero. Wow, that's a lot to chew on, isn't it? So we're gonna go through our two statements, our two power statements, that first one that it goes on and on and on, the second one which harmonizes and then we're going to do those in, make those three strong intents. So, we'll talk next week about what else we do with these power statements. Between now and then, since Stephen put them in the comments, they're there for you to look at. And as I said, we, he has not written them previously for, public, for the public. So get it in front of you or just say it so many times and really pay attention. It's understanding what the words mean more than the words themselves, although the words themselves must have a power that is very, very, very strong because of the results that Stephen gets in his appointments. So. Perhaps the next time we'll be lucky enough for Stephen to be presenting his statements himself. But this, during this week, do take the time in the morning first thing. This is part of the checking in process that he and I do every day. It is part of the morning alignment and the evening integration. It is so important for us to be as clear as it's possible for us to be before we sleep. Would you agree? When we are not clear when we go to sleep, we are open for all sorts of negativity and all sorts of challenges to come in. So, make a commitment. I challenge you to make that commitment to do that morning thing, first thing, that morning awakening alignment and that evening integration. Utilizing these statements after creating your sacred space. And I look forward to hearing from you and learning what, what you have experienced using these statements. And I'll see you next Sunday. Have a happy, happy week.